Welcome to this tutorial where we are going to learn how to build our own pre-shakable SVG icon library in Angular in less than 30 minutes. Let's compare SVG icons versus icon font. An SVG icon offers a bunch of advantages over an icon font and is therefore considered state-of-the-art. SVG icons, for example, can have multiple colors. An icon font on the other side can't. Means an icon of an icon font can only have one color. So it can be blue, it can be black, but it can't be blue and black. So you have more possibilities when creating colorful icons. Another advantage is that even though both formats are vector-based, browser interpret fonts as text and therefore SVG usually looks sharper. SVG can also be positioned by setting the size. Icon fonts on the other side are inserted via a pseudo element and therefore positioning them is trickier. Another cool advantage of, of SVG icons is that they have a built-in semantic meaning, which improves accessibility. And if you think about it, SVG is just code, so we don't have any additional HTTP requests to perform. Because it's just code, we have to be very careful how we deliver our icons. Imagine we have an icon library that provides 300 icons, and we have a consumer that only uses one of them. In those cases, we don't want all 300 to end up in the consumer's bundle if he only uses one. So therefore, we need to find a way to deliver our icons in a tree shakeable and performant way. To do so, we can first take a look at one of the most popular, if not the most popular icon library, Font Awesome, how they deal with this problem. Let's check out a very popular project that is created by my good friend Thomas Tryon, and it's called Angular MG. Rx material starter. And in this project, Thomas is also using SVG icons provided by Font Awesome. So the first thing that we see that he imports some icons, some Font Awesome icons from a free solid SVG icons project that is provided by Font Awesome. Those are just raw icons. To, in order to use them in this Angular project, he imports the Font Awesome module and the FA icon library from Angular Font Awesome. So first he imports a module and this module gives us access to a component that, that this library provides an Angular component. And then he also imports a far icon library. So this far icon library, he then injects inside the constructor of the shared module and then he adds his icon. So he registers icons to this far icon library. Once he registers them, he's ready to use them. So because he imported the font awesome module, we get access to a far icon component, which accepts an icon name as an input. So let's summarize this. So the first thing that he does is he imports a bunch of SVG icons. Then he also imports a module and a library, which is technically it's just an Angular service. And then he takes those icons, registers them, imports his module and uses the component he gets by importing the module and passes down an icon name to render this icon. So let's visualize this concept. So we have a single page application. Then we have an icon library and we have an Angular adapter. So in the font awesome example, the icon library will be the free solid SVG icons and the Angular wrapper would be the Angular font awesome. So we have the spa, the raw SVG icon library and the Angular wrapper. So what now happens is in the first step you import the icon, in the second step you register the icon and in the first step you use the component. So that's exactly the concept we need in order to enable tree shaking. To have tree shaking we have to be explicit about our intents. By importing the icons we want to use, our SPA is explicit about the icons it wants to use. And tree shakers can analyze these import statements to optimize the, the resulting bundle. Therefore, we need this kind of concept around. So we are going to do the exact same thing for our own icon library. So we are going to implement a SVG icon library and we are going to use open source tools, which I provided. And we are also going to build a wrapper again with the help of some nice schematics. We will start by implementing the icon library. The next we will implement the Angular adapter and finally the spa to pull everything together. So see you in the next video.